my story actually starts about a year before September 11th. I had a very strange feeling uh, that something was changing, and I couldn't quite understand what that was. And, uh, but it felt like things were changing, and um, I just couldn't get this feeling out of my, my head. So I decided to tell my train buddy, Rose, who's also my colleague, my neighbor, and we would take the train to and from work every day. And I told Rose about these feelings that I was having of uncertainty. And, you know, we would talk about everything from, you know, solving life's problems and whatnot, and we would always, you know, enjoy many, many conversations. But the one conversation that always seemed to come back over and over again was this feeling of uncertainty. And I told Rose, you know, we're going to look back one day, and life as we know it is going to be different. And fast forward to July of 2001, and these feelings became stronger. And I started thinking about my own mortality. So I started to reorganize my life and gave away some of my jewelry to family members because I felt like it wasn't meant to be sitting in a drawer collecting dust, that it was meant to be shared. So you see, my backstory is that for half my life, I've been mourning the loss of my three siblings, Billy, Anne, and Tommy. And when I think back to the days when we would all hang out on a Friday night playing cards for money, because we try to keep it within the family, I remember Tommy just sitting back saying how he couldn't wait for his first big fire. But at the same breath, he said he'd be the next to go. And three months later, Tommy was killed in his first fire in the line of duty. Three weeks before September 11th, I unexpectedly changed jobs. And now I'm working for a company called Aon Insurance for Services. And on the morning of September 11th, I'm on the 92nd floor of the South Tower, admiring this beautiful view of the island of Manhattan, a cloudless sky, talking to my new friend, Julia. And as we're chatting along, I hear my colleague talking about a plane. But I didn't think too much of it. I just heard her talking about this plane over and over again until she got to the point where she started pointing at the window and started to shout. And she said, oh my god, oh my god. And when I looked out the window, I saw a large commercial plane with the letters AA and the red and blue stripe. And I can hear the noise of the plane as it was rushing towards the window. And it almost felt like it was going to land on top of your head. And instead, it made this slight turn. And it plunged quietly into the North Tower. Seconds later, there was a massive explosion, this huge eruption fireball with multiple colors and shredded paper shooting into the sky. And I can feel a flash of heat singe my necklace. And it looked like something you would see on the 4th of July, a fireworks display. And then there's the sun that I saw just moments earlier, sitting over this horrific scene. And in my heart, you know, I knew people died and went to heaven. I immediately, my body immediately shook with fear. And I went back to my desk. I grabbed my pocketbook, shut off my computer, and walked with my friend Julia to the other side of the tower where our unit was staying. And we told Diane, who was a team leader, what had happened. Because if you weren't there, if you didn't see it, you wouldn't have known anything. So as she's trying to evacuate our unit, I remember seeing my boss, Larry, from across the room. And he was just clutching the window, as the, watching the fire. And I remember that was the last time I ever saw him alive. And Diane led us down the stairwell. And as we're going down the stairwell, I immediately started crying, thinking about those people who died. And I just had to pull myself together. So I imagined being somewhere else. And I like to gamble. So I said something stupid. Um, your body does things that you don't really know or expect that's going to happen in, in, in the time of tragedy. So I started counting floors. And I started counting them out loud. And every time I got down to another floor, I would say, floor number 82. Place your bets, black or red, as if I was playing you know, roulette. But I would keep doing that over and over and over again, every time I made it down to another floor, until some woman, some woman told me to shut up. So I did. And then we made it down to the 78th Sky Lobby, where we could have gotten out in about 45 seconds. But we heard the announcement, the building is secure. Go back to your desk. There was no sense of urgency, and people started going back up. But well, we decided to keep walking down because you're not supposed to take an elevator during a fire, even though there was no fire in our tower. But Diane had bad knees that we were walking with, but we decided just to keep walking. So we kept walking and walking and walking. And I'm still counting floors, but this time I'm counting them in my head. 
where I remembered where I was when my friend Julia got a phone call on the 56th floor of the South Tower. And she said, we're fine, we're good, we're getting out, we're safe. And as soon as she hung up that phone, there was a massive explosion. I, did, I immediately thought that it was a secondary gas explosion from the first attack. What I didn't know is that our tower was just struck. We all screamed. The tower shook us violently from side to side. And I felt death. And I heard God's voice in my head saying, Susan, that's it. You're up. Let's go. You're coming with me. And it followed with, by this vision of me falling down the stairwell trapped with no way out. And then I thought about my three siblings. And I knew they were with me. I could feel their presence. And I went from death to life in a matter of seconds. And then I just remember feeling God's presence all around me, like a protective barrier where nothing bad could penetrate. It was an emotional calmness that came over me, a peacefulness. And I knew that I was going to be safe on the 56th floor. And I told Diane, look, my parents lost three children. I'm not going to be the fourth one to go. Let me help you. I know that God will protect us. So she, as I'm saying this, a man's voice from behind said, to stay calm. Let's keep moving a little faster, and we'll all get out safely. And we followed his instructions. I helped Diane down. We made it down all the way down 92 floors through the mall, which looked like a ghost town, out to the plaza, which looked like gray matter. And as we're outside of the, of the plaza, we see the two towers burning. And the cops were like, just don't look, don't look back, just keep going. But you had to look back and think, how did I survive these two towers? And then I heard my mother's voice in my head saying, Susan, don't be stupid. There are two buildings burning. Run and get out. So as I'm hearing her voice in my head, my girlfriend Julia starts speaking those words. And we clutched arms, and we just ran east towards City Hall. And we didn't stop running. I was able to make a phone call, and I spoke to my twin sister. And I told her that I was OK. But she said to me that she thought for a moment that I had died. But she said, no. You can step in and come out smelling like a rose. And so she, she just had that feeling. I guess twins can feel something special. There's a special bond. Anyway, she wasn't able to convince my dad on the other end of the phone. He had to hear my voice to know that it was still alive. And he kept saying, not again, not again. And when I stepped outside a few minutes later, I watched the South Tower collapse. And I was confused and horrified. And 30 minutes later, I watched the North Tower collapse. I knew thousands of people died, and nothing felt real. I made it home at 6 o'clock, greeted by family at the bus stop. And you couldn't tell by looking at me that I had survived the attacks. I felt detached, almost like I wasn't there, and that somebody else was walking in my shoes. And I remember going home to my front door, and my train buddy, Rose, ran up to me and said, oh my god, Susan, oh my god, thinking about our conversations on the subway. She was, how did you get out? And I looked at her, and I said, I, I just walked down. But we both looked at each other and knew that I did not walk alone. And days later, I remembered that vision in the stairwell, and I knew that God was with me.